Hello, welcome to Real Cool Adventures. I'm Mike, this is... Hello, welcome to Real Cool Adventures. Today we're going to show you how to make a feeder for under $10, real inexpensive. You can feed almost any animal. I actually had one of these in Lauren's crib when she was little and she would hit it. And that's, now look how big she is. So I know they work. So let's go ahead and get in the action. First of all, we have a little bucket, $6. This is your most expensive part. Then all you do is you can take almost any type of screw you have laying around the house. You can take a wooden dowel. You can take a piece of PVC. Um, but I'm gonna show you the general idea how to do it. Then I already have one in the woods here. I'm gonna show you that in a second. But let's go ahead and jump into the action. So just take this little tool. Now you could use a knife or some type of saw and be careful, don't cut yourself. But all you're gonna do is we're gonna make a little hole in the bottom of here, okay? Really simple. I'm gonna take this and whatever size dowel or, or some of them I do out of PVC, whatever you decide to use, you wanna make the hole about half an inch larger all the way around because you'll see in a second, once I put this dowel through that opening, I'm gonna put screws and stuff on there and I want corn to barely be able to come through. When an animal bumps into this, it'll fall out. So here we go. I just take this. We're gonna pick up our garbage. Now you can also, if you had a hole saw, you can do the same thing. I just did, I just had this tool, so I did it this way. Go ahead and knock that out. Like that. I'm actually gonna put it in my pocket so we'll lose it. So there we go. That's how you do it. Just kidding. So now we're gonna take this. See how this will go through here, like so. All we're gonna do now is we want this to go up about halfway inside of here and it's gonna stay in there. I'm gonna put screws in there and then we're gonna hang this up on a tree and when the animals bump into this, the corn will fall out. I'll show you that in a second. So here we go. Just gonna take this, set that aside. I'm gonna grab a screw gun. It's really easy. And I'm just gonna start applying screws. One there. Now, I know what you're thinking. If I had a pre-drill bit, I would pre-drill it so the wood doesn't split. But, tack that guy in there. Just that easy. And we're just gonna go all the way up this. That's it. All we're gonna do is drop this in, like so. And that's your final product. See how that is in there? Okay, now when that sits like that, the corn will jam up in there. And then we put our lid on, we'll hang it from a tree, we'll dump our corn in, make sure you put a lid. And then when the animals shake it like this, it drops out. Now what you wanna do, depending on what type of animals you're targeting, I like to have them up fairly high so they have to work, work at it pull a little bit and that keeps them in the area a lot longer. It doesn't overfeed them. And it's just that simple. So there you go. A bucket, take the lid off, a wooden dowel or piece of PVC, anything like that. And you get the general idea. Now we're gonna go fill up one that I have out here in the woods. We'll show you that. Oh, and another thing. You can take a can of spray paint or something, depending on where you are. If you were somewhere you wanted to hide it a little better, you could spray paint the bucket or something like that, and make it blend in the background. But what we're doing is we're trying to film some stuff. So we left it white so the animals will actually stand out in front of the camera. Put that in slow motion. Watch this, watch this. Do the Michael Jackson. <laughs> My foot's stuck on a vine. It's talented. Don't, that's quicksand, so don't walk off of that. So 
So I don't know if anything's eating this or not. I set up a camera here last night, but here's the here's the idea. All you do, see when an animal comes, takes its body, and it knocks into it. See how it just falls out. And it's just that easy. So another thing is the reason I'm using corn, if you wanted to use bird feed or something like that, you would adjust the hole accordingly. This one, I left a half an inch around this uh, three quarter inch piece of PVC. So that way the corn jams up around, when it goes like this, it jams up around the side and it wedges in there and it doesn't fall out. You don't want it to just run out or you just might as well dump everything on the ground. So this one's set up really perfectly. I'm gonna go ahead and top it off. We're using whole corn. You get the idea. That's it, just that simple. Now, oh, another thing I wanted to tell you also, depending on where you are, this area, there's a ton of raccoons. Raccoons can't grab onto this without sliding down. So I also, on this tree limb, I stuck a piece of PVC. I slid that down on this rope. That way, when the little things decide to scale down, they hit that. They'll reach at their back legs, and if they try to crawl down, they come sliding about Mach 10, jump off this thing. They try it a couple times. They get smart, and I think they're already in the trees. And then, that way they can't take the lid off and, and rob all your food from you. And if you want to improvise and do this with some type of household stuff you have laying around to save money, I'm sure you could do it with a bleach bottle or something like that on a smaller scale. Um, go ahead and wash it out, obviously. And go ahead and stay tuned because we're going to, next thing you know, we're going to go ahead and check these uh, cameras and we'll see what's on that. Rat a tat tat. All right, so we're back and we're coming to review the footage and check it out. I put this in like a low valley area and uh, this is our DIY how to build an animal feeder. First I'm checking my little camera and see if the wind's gonna blow. Obviously I've set all my glasses on but let's get into it. So I slung a little bit of corn in here just to try to get the scent in the area and uh, it's real important that you adjust the height of these things. I don't like to put them right in the ground because if the wind, or if it bangs into the bushes, it'll shake the uh, feet out. And this is the sketchiest little bridge I had to build across there. But it's also the low. It hasn't rained yet. It's kind of the dry season down here. All right. Mm, sturdy. All right, so I'm back. And I'm cutting some bushes because I actually have a stand up there to the right. And I'm trying to be able to see the feeder and see what's there with the naked eye. Right, let's keep going here. All right, so now it's gone off at nighttime. Ooh, and we've got a crispy little critter coming up. It's drawing the raccoons in. And the feeder's sitting still, which is cool. See a little raccoon down there by the quicksand. This company's been asking for something. Okay. And this is a new camera that was actually sent to us by the Ape Man. I think that's the name of the camera. And a lot of times we put two or three cameras out in different areas. And this one has actually outperformed some of the really expensive ones. So we appreciate that. Everything helps. And it makes our life a lot easier when it works. So raccoons using my little bridge. If he goes one foot further, he's going to sink down and never come back up. I'm telling you, I fell in there and almost. Oh, maybe he's lighter than I am. Huh. It's okay, so he smells it. Now the whole idea is this, to bring him in the area and then they literally just knock, we call, some people call them knocker feeders, but basically they shake that little pipe at the bottom and the food falls out, as you saw the way we built this thing. It's hard to get him to do it on film. Oh, there we go. See how it's shaking right there? They get around it, they look up, they smell it, they know there's corn in there. That's actually a really cool picture. And they will sit there and one will shake it and they'll just keep filling up. They just keep bumping their body into it. 
Now it's real important you keep it just out of reach of whatever animals you have in your area. And um, if you have cows or something, you might want to put a fence around it because cows literally inhale the thing. But look at look at that. Oh, I'll scratch your back if you shake the corn feeder. It's kind of a cool picture. So we know this works really, really well for raccoons. Let's hope we can get some other stuff to kind of come by. Oh, there we go. There's the gang. How many? See if, if anybody leave a description down below how many are in this gang. These guys are super territorial. Those are river otters, and they are probably the most dangerous thing in the Everglades that I'm aware of. I don't care. They literally leave gang signs. They'll scratch their name in trees, and they're territorial. And there's, I don't know how many are in that gang. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's the gang of six. There's another group of four or five on the other side of the property. But it's still cool. Okay, so right here it, it rained and I came back and I had to move the cameras. I was by myself. And I don't know if anybody knows what type of reeds those are in the back. But in South Florida, that's an indicator that you're in four to five feet of muck. And it's basically like quicksand. And if you can sell how, see how wet I am on the left. Literally ruined everything I had in my pockets trying to get to that feeder. And I fell in the water and I was out there screaming by myself. And do us a favor, leave a comment down below. It really helps us grow. And we'll see you in the next adventure.